Hello everyone and welcome to the series about IPython Notebook. This is the last part and it's an exercise where we will be analyzing real world data. Uh, we will be uh, analyzing the Indian elections of 2014, which is the Indian general elections. Um, we will start with the results, but uh, let's take a look at the map first. We have um, um, the um, uh, the general elections of uh, 2014 constituting the 16th uh, Lok Sabha or the House of People. Uh, we have 35 states um, with uh, 543 parliamentary constitu uh, constituencies. Um, the um, elections were held from the 7th of April until 12th of May 2014. Um, if we look at the results of seats per party, we have the um, BJP winning 51.9 of the seats, a solid majority. We have uh, INC with 8.1% uh, of the seats. I understand these are the big two parties of the um, uh, Indian um, politics. Um, and we have uh, overall 36 parties sharing the Lok Sabha. Um, and here we have the results of uh, votes per party. BJP get 34.9% of the votes and INC get 21.8. How did BJP get 51 um, point, um, more than 51% uh, percent of the seats? And how did INC ended up with only 8% of the seats with 21% of the votes? That's what we will understand in this uh, lecture. Um, this is a chart with the um, total votes uh, in, on a log scale. So this is 1 million, this is 10 million, and this is 100 million. Uh, and here we have uh, the number of seats. It's also a log scale. So this is 1, and this is 10, and this is 100 seats. So we can see uh, BJP with the 282 seats. We have INC with 44. Well, we have um, SDF with the least amount of votes with a single uh, seat. And we have the um, CPI with the maximum amounts of votes winning only one um, seat. So that's all dependent on uh, which state they're working on and uh, their strategy. And that's what we will be mainly analyzing. Um, the data source uh, that I used in here, I used the ECI, which is the um, Election Commission of India. Um, first, we'll start by uh, um, loading um, panda, loading uh, the data using pandas. So I'm importing pandas as PD. Then I'm or importing division from underscore underscore future underscore underscore. What does uh, what this does is it makes float division the default, not integer division. By default in Python, um, in Python 2, um, integer division um, is uh, the default if you divide two integers. So four divided by two is two, three divided by two is one, which is not really correct. Um, float division, uh, 4.0, so if you have one of the sides or both floats, it will do a float division. So 4.0 divided by 2.0 equals 2.0. 3.0 divided by 2.0 equals 1.5. Um, this line makes uh, float division the default. Um, so uh, after we um, import division from future, 4.2 equals 2.0, and 3 divided by 2 equals 1.5. If we want to force integer divisions, we can use double forward slash to do that. So 4 divided divided by 2 equals 2, 3 divided divided by 2 equals 1. After we import division from future. Um, so we will load this uh, data. This data is available uh, open source on uh, GitHub. Uh, you can download it and replicate the results that we are getting in here. Um, this uh, comma separated value file is loaded into a data frame using read CSV um, function from pandas. Uh, the first column is the index. 
Um, and here we have state, we have uh, PC as a uh, parliamentary uh, constituency. Uh, we have uh, male electors and male voters, and we have female electors and female voters, and we have total electors and total voters. And this is for all 543 parliamentary consti uh, constituencies that we have. Uh, so we have all of them in this um, data frame. Um, this is uh, the map, so you can uh, reference any parliamentary uh, constituency you want to visualize on the map. And this is a map with the states of India. Um, I left those here, so you can use them as a reference whenever you're working with uh, this data. Uh, so we will like, we'll start by calculating the turnout. Uh, so um, I'm um, uh, creating a new uh, column in here called male turnout, which is uh, male voters uh, divided by male electors. So who, uh, the male voters who actually voted divided by all the male electors. Then I'm calculating female turnout and total turnout in the same way. So let's uh, execute that. Uh, and let's um, get a quick um, statistical analysis of this, just to see if it makes any sense. We have um, 543 um, um, parliamentary constituencies. Um, the average uh, male uh, electors is um, 804,000. Um, the minimum is uh, 25,000 male electors. And the maximum is um, 1.7 million um, male voters, uh, male electors, sorry. Uh, voters, uh, this is the um, a mean, uh, minimum, and maximum, female. Let's take a look at um, turnout in here. Uh, we have um, male turnout. Um, in average, they showed up um, uh, 68 um, percent of uh, electors, of uh, male electors, um, six, uh, 66 percent of uh, female electors in average showed up, and in average, um, 67 percent of people showed up. Um, so uh, quick facts, uh, total electors are, um, we have uh, 834 million uh, electors, this is by far the largest uh, elections in history. Uh, gender ratio, so we have 90% uh, of um, all electors are uh, male. Um, we have um, total votes, uh, 535 million votes, and total turnout of 66.4%. Uh, so let's uh, analyze um, the uh, states. So in here, I'm getting uh, um, comma separated value uh, data of state, and then I'm getting unique. So it will return only unique states. So I get this list with 35 states. And I'm storing this in a new data frame called states. So uh, we'll start uh, doing some things. Uh, I'm using here function of um, uh, called uh, value counts. This will count uh, how many times uh, the same value uh, appeared in a series. So in here, I'm counting um, each state, how many times did it show up? So I'm um, counting how many parliamentary constituencies um, in each state. Um, and I'm storing uh, this uh, data in a series called um, uh, seats. Um, then I'm sorting it um, to get a, a an alphabetical sorted uh, list and storing it in seats, uh, in, in uh, the, the data frame uh, seats, uh, states, sorry. Uh, then I'm displaying it by uh, sorting uh, seats um, in a descending uh, order. So we have the biggest uh, state of um, Uttar 
um, Pradesh with the 80 seats. And we have uh, s the smallest uh, states with um, single uh, seats, uh, with, uh, with a single seat uh, in the uh, House of People. Um, we're calculating uh, total state electors and votes. So I'm using a function called pivot table. Um, this summarizes my table in any way I want. So in here, I'm um, counting electors per state. So my rows are states. I'm passing, sorry, the um, complete data. I'm telling it values are the total electors. And the rows, uh, or what I want to summarize by, is the states, or group by the states. Then the aggregate function is sum. So get the sum of all total electors. Uh, I'm doing the same thing with the votes. So I'm getting, the only thing I'm changing in here is total votes instead of total electors. I'm using the same function of pivot table. Uh, then I'm uh, storing the results um, uh, in the same um, data frame states in two new columns, total electors and total votes. Then I'm sorting it by total electors. So we can see um, the state with the maximum number of um, electors is Uttar Pradesh uh, with um, 138 million electors and 81 million voters and the smallest state uh, is um, uh, Lakshadweep I'm sure I tortured this name uh, with the 49,000 um, uh, electors and 43,000 voters who actually showed up um, I'll be calculating the state turnout so I'm uh, calculating a new column turnout in the states uh, data frame by dividing the total voters divided by total electors then I'm sorting it by turnout so we can see that uh, NCT of Delhi got the highest turnout with the 87 um, percent um, then the least um, turnout was in Jammu and Kashmir with 49 percent um, turnout. Uh, here I'm calculating the um, electors uh, per seat, so we can see uh, we can see that in here, and we have um, um, uh, in here the uh, highest electors per seat in um, um, Nagaland with um, um, with the one second. Yeah, with 1.8 million electors per seat. And uh, it goes down to um, uh, Lakshadweep with uh, 49,000 electors per seat. Um, uh, in here, I'll be reading the results. The results are also stored in a, a tab-separated uh, value file but uh, it has the extension of um, uh, CSV. So in here, I'm using the separator. Um, I'm telling it the separator is tab. Um, this is what we got. We got um, name of state, parliamentary constituency, uh, candidate name, total votes polled, winner or not. This is yes or no. Party abbreviation and party name. And we can see um, for each parliamentary uh, constituency, it's listing all the people who um, who competed for um, who competed for one of the um, uh, seats, basically. Um, and we have uh, this data. Uh, we can uh, tell that um, eight thousand seven hundred ninety-four. Uh, results are in this um, table. So uh, let's start by um, analyzing the uh, results. Uh, let me change this into something pretty. So analyzing the results. Um, I'm starting by getting 
all the winners in a separate data frame called winners. To do that, I'm filtering my results data data frame with this rule. So this is the rule I'm using where results of winner or not equals equals yes. So it's getting only people who has yes in their winner or not column and filtering only them. Then I'm sorting uh, by the um, uh, state uh, slash ut. So I'm sorting by the state um, name. So uh, they will uh, match my other data frame. So I can uh, store the, move the data there later. Um, so I'll uh, be loading this uh, results uh, into my original um, CSV uh, data, data frame. Um, I'm storing uh, candidate name from winners. I'm storing um, party abbreviation from also from winners, party abbreviations. I'm storing um, party name, total votes polled, all in uh, CSV uh, data. And now uh, let me make this shorter so it's easier to deal with. Uh, and now I can see that I have one, two, three, four new columns in here. Candidate name, abbreviation, party abbreviation, uh, party name, and total votes for each um, uh, parliamentary cons uh, constituency. Um, I'll be calculating the winning margin. Uh, so the winning margin is the total votes polled for the winning, um, uh, for the winning candidate divided by total votes and I'm sorting them with the winning percentage in a descending way let me make this shorter so it's easier to deal with Oops. so um, I have the um, winner percentage um, and uh, in here the highest uh, winning percentage was 75 percent um, and the guy who got that was um, from the BJP party, followed by 72% for Modi. His, um, he got really uh, good uh, winning margin. Uh, and it goes down. Um, there are way too many records to um, just analyze them this way. So we'll be looking at more statistics later. Uh, but the lowest we have in here was 56%. Um, uh, we'll uh, see that this is not the whole story because we have only two, uh, 289 rows in here and the complete data frame has five th uh, 543 rows. So uh, let's uh, do some um, uh, um, analysis of uh, winners per by uh, party. So I'm... Um, I'm returning uh, party abbreviation um, and using value count to count how many um, how many times did each party abbreviation showed up in the um, in our data set in our in our winners data set actually uh, then I'm um, I'm naming this uh, column seats and um, I'm also calculating how many, uh, what's the percentage of uh, seats that this party got and uh, returning the data set. So I have in here um, uh, BJP with the 282 seats, 51%. Uh, then uh, INC with the 44 seats, 8%. And the list goes on, on until the lowest um, parties with uh, one seat. Um, we have um, all uh, votes and uh, all votes um, average. In here, I'm using the same function of uh, pivot table to summarize um, and using party abbreviation as our uh, rows, or it will group the results um, by uh, party abbreviation. For the first one, I'm using um, aggregate function equals sum, so it will uh, sum all the votes, sum all the total votes polled, which is uh, how many votes did the winning party uh, got. And um, in here, I'm using mean 
this is this will uh, return the average of total uh, votes uh, polled. I'm storing uh, these uh, results in uh, two variables: all votes and all votes average. Uh, and here I'm using two lambda functions um, to basically return um, the values of these based on um, the party abbreviation. So uh, if I pass any party abbreviation, it will return uh, get total votes, it will return total votes, get average votes, it will return average votes. Um, and I'm uh, passing uh, our index, which is the party abbreviation, to this function using apply uh, on this series and storing it uh, in our results data frame. Um, and this is how it looks now. So I have um, seats, BJP seats, uh, seats percentage. Then I have total votes and average votes. I can tell now that uh, BJP got seven, uh, 171, uh, 171 million votes. Um, with a an average of forty one thousand uh, for uh, four hundred and one uh, thousand votes uh, in each uh, parliamentary constitution um, constituency, and then we have uh, INC with one hundred and six million votes, uh, with an average of two hundred and thirty um, votes per um, parliamentary constituency. So we can see we can start to see what happened here uh, their votes were um, mostly spread between parliamentary constituencies bjp had um, a clear uh, a more clear strategy by concentrating on their winning um, parliamentary constituencies we'll uh, be looking more at that later uh, so i'll be um, calculating uh, votes that resulted in winning seats using um, pivot table and using the same way with lambda functions to calculate total winning votes so how many votes uh, resulted in uh, um, in, a w uh, in a winning um, seat uh, average winning votes and then I have average uh, winning um, percentage um, so what's the percentage that they won with and I have finally the um, average winning electors uh, of that uh, vote uh, that I don't think I'm using. But uh, anyway, um, th then I'm calculating losing votes. So how many votes they got that did not result in a winning seat. And then I'm dividing winning votes by total votes to get their ratio. So let's uh, take a look at this. We have uh, BJP. Uh, let's uh, take a look at our new columns in here. We have total winning votes. We have total um, winning uh, average winning votes. Um, then we have uh, average winning uh, percentage. They're winning usually uh, an average by 49%. Uh, average uh, winning electors. Losing votes. Uh, they 300 and, um, th um, 321 uh, no, sorry. Yeah, um, 31 million votes did not result in winning seats. Um, so that's 81% of their votes resulted in a winning seat. If you look at INC in here, um, their losing vote is 88 million. So only 17% of their votes resulted in a winning um, seat and you can see why the um, uh, strategy was different but between uh, uh, BJP and INC I'm not talking about political um, um, uh, agendas or anything in here I'm just talking about um, statistical results so I'm not endorsing or um, um, I really don't uh, don't know these parties, although I watched all kinds of uh, um, debates, but uh, the issues were too um, deep for me to understand uh, for the scope of this uh, thing. Uh, anyway, I'm result. Uh, I'm uh, describing uh, this um, da uh, data frame using uh, describe to return some uh, statistical uh, analysis. 
uh, we can say um, see in here that um, winning votes ratio some parties they all their votes resulted in a winning ratio so 100 percent and minimum was eight percent um, um, some parties um, with only eight percent of their votes going to a um, winning uh, seat and 92 percent of their votes went to um, went to uh, seats that they did not uh, win i will be uh, visualizing uh, this uh, results or these uh, results so uh, first of all i'm uh, uh, plotting a pie uh, chart in here. Um, my the number of seats is my um, value. Uh, labels are the index, which are the um, party abbreviations. I'm using explode to um, to make this effect. Uh, yeah, to make this effect, and I'm using um, a. Um, mathematical equation in here to keep pushing uh, uh, exploding each one further and further um, away from the center um, we can see BJ uh, BJP got 51.9 INC got uh, 8.1 of the seats uh, I'm doing the same thing in here for the total votes so we can see BJP got uh, 34.9 and I see get 21.8 percent of the votes and we can see uh, among list of other uh, states in here the least state with vo uh, uh, the least uh, sorry party with the uh, votes is uh, SDF and um, um, maximum is um, yeah. BJP in here I'm um, using um, scatter to create this chart um, this is a log scale and this is a log scale this is total votes per seats um, you can see uh, BJP up here and you can see all the parties with one seat with two seats and the size of these um, circles um, is represent how successful this strategy was so with um, the least amount of votes you get the m uh, most amount of seats for SDF and that wasn't the case for CPI uh, or IND um, because JKPDP get uh, also three seats with not even one million votes with less than one million votes and uh, IND, ca we can tell that they got more than 10 million votes in here. Um, and they also got three seats. And you can do the same thing for four. Uh, and in here we have nine. And we can see how does this chart uh, work to tell us how successful a strategy was. Um, I will uh, be just uh, showing the... Uh, results uh, data frame in here uh, did not uh, come up but um, um, anyway this um, tutorial is available uh, open source on github and it's viewable on MB viewer uh, you can uh, use this for any purpose you want it's uh, open source and uh, licensed for any um, usage that you uh, uh, for any purpose that you want to use it for um, the one more thing if you go back to the top uh, in MB viewer and click on IPython tutorial you will get all other um, tutorials in the series starting with the uh, notebooks and sales markdown and latex basic Python numpy plotting charts IPython widgets pandas simpy and you can open any of them and um, see the um, uh, notebook inside it. So you can bookmark this and use it later as a reference. Uh, you can go to um, GitHub to get the original data files. And these are the two CSV files that we used in this exercise. Thank you for watching. And I hope if you like this, you will subscribe to this channel. 
and uh, you might want to uh, watch the IPython uh, notebook series if you did not see um, any of it. This is the last part of it, so you can uh, go through the uh, series to understand um, some of the functions that we used and some of the libraries that we used. And if you're interested in machine learning, uh, we have another series in here. Click in here to um, uh, watch a uh, series starting with the setting up your environment on Amazon Web Services, um, clustering, uh, classification, regression, all in there. Thank you.